Welcome to the B2 show. I am Kilbo Fragon, and as always, I am joined by the amazing Gimmicks. How you doing, man? I'm doing great. How about yourself? Hmm? It's not bad. I'm day off, so finally get to do this together. Yeah, so this must be nice to have a day off. Yeah, no. I know. I came straight from work, and this is what we're doing now. And I appreciate it, sir. Well, I mean, it's my house, so it wasn't too out of the way for me. Right. So. so. All righty. Well, um, let's move on to housekeeping here real quick. Of course, as always, like I like to mention, first of which is the Belding Beatnik Bazaar, which has two shows left this summer slash fall. Um, so it's going to be September 13th. Um, and October 11th is the final two dates for the bazaar. So once again, if you like farmer's markets, flea markets, it's not really a flea market, but there's some crafty stuff there. Um, want to check that out. That is in downtown Belding at the gathering place. Uh, second of which is of course, tail waggers pet rescue out of Wyoming, Michigan. So if you don't know who they are, uh, they are wonderful rescue right out of Wyoming, Michigan here. And they travel all the way to Texas to rescue uh, dogs in a high kill shelter um, facility down there. Um, they are actually partnering with the bazaar. Um, so weather permitting, the tail wagger pet rescue is going to be able to um, adopt out dogs at the bazaar on the October 11th show. Uh, so if you're looking for a furry family member to add um you're going to want to be down at the october 11th show for the bazaar so with the uh the, the the tail waggers like what do they just dogs and cats or what uh they are primarily dogs gotcha um and they actually they're a group i to be honest i should know more than what i do but they they started a little while ago, um, been around for a little bit. So Michelle and Jason uh, are the owners of the rescue, and they actually use uh, people such as yourself if you wanted to. I know the apartment complex probably does not allow it, but uh, you can become a foster if you want to, um, and that just means to uh, give puppies or adult dogs a home until they find their forever home. So you're just kind of a... Um, Nursing uh, home, a, a if you may. Foster parent, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so definitely fun. That's what my wife and I do. Right now we actually have a little girl um, puppy. Puppy. Uh, <laughs> by the name of Pam, who has some medical complications that she has to get taken care of. So we'll be holding on to her um, for a little bit. Uh, my wife is trying to talk me into forever. We'll see who wins this battle. I mean, you don't have enough uh, animals as it is. You could always use more. Thanks for being on my side, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, also, one quick thing that I would like to ask our listeners, um, and if you think it's a good idea, you can drop into our Facebook page, which Dan will be providing here in just a little bit. Uh, but Dan and I are thinking about setting up a Google voicemail for you guys to leave uh, voice messages for us to listen to, answer to, I leave questions that way just as a uh, verbal communication instead of just all nonverbal through messaging and stuff like that. So if you think that's a good idea, um, hit us up on our Facebook page. And as um, if you don't like to do the voicemail route, um, you can also send us questions at our Facebook page, which, Dan? Uh, Facebook, let's see, where do we begin? We have so many social medias. Um, so Facebook for this podcast is Facebook. It is facebook.com slash the B2 show. Um, or you can find our gaming page that we haven't, uh, given much love to recently. Right. Um, which that one, we don't have a custom URL on that one. So if you just search B2 gaming on Facebook, uh, I should bring it up. You can also follow each of us individually on Twitter. Um, for me, it is twitter.com slash the underscore gimmicks and twitter.com slash killbofragon underscore b2 for killbofragon, obviously. And you can also find us on Twitch, we, which we've also not given much love to recently. Yeah. So we both uh, kind of had a little bit of a discussion. Dis- 
discussing a discussing uh, <laughs> discussion before the podcast here, and we definitely want to give much love to that too. So that was yeah. kind of for those of you that have been with us since day one, which started on Twitch TV. Um, thank you for sticking with us. Um, but again, it is our kind of uh, starting place, if yeah. you may. Um, it was something that uh, uh, Gimmicks and I had talked about back in August of last year and kind of got the bull ball ruby moving pretty quickly um, in September. <coughs> um, and that's where we got our start was Twitch TV. So definitely trying to find our um, kind of rhythm back on the gaming side of things, trying to find a game that we can at least, you know, give time to and maybe right. are a little bit more excited to play too. So, yeah. Um, um, so for the Twitches, you can find Kilbo at twitch.tv slash Kilbo Fragon and for me, twitch.tv slash the underscore gimmicks. Um, kind of about what you said, we started what August last year around is when we kind of started <laughs> planning everything. I would have to go back and see for sure. It was either late August or early September. I know we started like the actual streaming was in late September, October. Yep. Because I remember we did, <clears throat> excuse me, we streamed the Halloween. Yes, we did. So I know we were at least already doing it by then. Yeah, and we'd been doing it for about a month there. So right. I, my guess would be the streaming started probably in September, but the discussions happened probably a month prior. So Right. Um, but yeah, I just, so we've been at this whole, you know, media project for a year now. Find, finding our way in life, if you may. Which, you know, whoa, my laptop just shut off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, like for most people, like doing something for a year is not a big deal. Right. But I've started a million things. Okay. And have done it for about three days. <laughs> you know, so for me, like the fact that we've been, I mean, it's kind of evolved and changed. We've kind of took breaks, but I mean, it's kind of been whether or not we were actually doing it. We were, you know, discussing and planning things. Right. On the backside of stuff. Right. So for, you know, for a year, which again, to most people is not a big deal. But it, to me, it just kind of blows my mind that I've yeah. actually been able to and do I'm, something for that long and i appreciate i mean i've been having this kind of i don't know if you want to call it a dream but um interest in starting kind of streaming on twitch for a lot longer before i met you and it right. just kind of was one of those things that we ended up in the same place of employment um you were working for a third party company at that time when we right. when we started it and we just kind of you know I think the discussion started with what video games do you like? And then from there it was, do you ever stream? And then it was no, but I want to get into it. And then me too. And then here we are, here we are. A, year, a year later. Yeah. It's um, not streaming. And <laughs> yeah, I know we talked about it in the last podcast, which was released a little bit over two weeks ago, which we want to try to get on a two week ru routine with the podcast. And I know we had discussed about recording multiple at a time so that we have something on the back burner in case, one of us gets sick or depressed or... Or just cancels. Right. Uh, that never happens. Um, yeah. But, so, again, to reiterate, kind of after the um, last podcast, I think two days a week on Twitch and a podcast or, pardon me, um, a... Uh, we also have a YouTube page, which I failed to not get that in there. Oh, uh, yeah. Um the YouTube, we also don't have a custom right. link for, so, so that is also just B2 Gaming. So if you go to the B2 show on Facebook, I'm sure um, you can find the B2 Gaming page. I believe I have um, all of the information in there. And so just look for the common common logo throughout all your social media to find us. Yep. Um, but definitely we're trying to get a presence, a overall presence in everything. So YouTube, Twitch, and a podcast is, is our end goal, I think, um, here uh towards the near near to end like or near future end of the year i don't know why i put those two together i don't um know. but uh so we're definitely we're still working on the back burner in there uh, just getting used to our schedules i know we've been saying that for <laughs> 19 years but um, things keep changing yeah things keep changing and people 
make certain requests. So I think we'll be we'll be on the right track here within a couple of weeks. So yeah. All right. And with that, do you have anything else as far as housekeeping? Uh, no, any, I think that's about it. I mean, we got through shout outs or. Uh, Oh, I would like to thank uh, my co-host here at the B2 show, uh, Gimmicks. That's Casey. me. Yeah. Um, we actually, this is the first podcast we're recording on the new equipment that he provided to the podcast. So I just appreciate you for putting a little this investment. This is uh, what you would call a low budget production. Yes. Um, but we're trying to make it sound as high budget as possible. It would help if you talk consistently into the same spot of the microphone. Yeah, I know. So just... For reference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because I don't know if you noticed you were doing that or not. Yeah. I keep turning and yeah, it's I'm a snake. <laughs> I'm a snake. <laughs> um, but anyway. yeah, uh, basically, you know, we were doing it over, you know, just Discord. And I mean, yep. it worked just not that well. well. Yeah. So I decided to, you know, max out my credit cards, <laughs> uh, get some, you know, fairly cheap equipment, but kind of a starting point, And then we can eventually... Yeah upgrade once we learn what the hell we're doing because i have an audio mixer that i just turn dials on and hope for the best right so, and so hopefully it sounds good um and with that dan did not know that this was going to be a thing today uh, but let's move on to our taste test so i'm sure you're pretty excited about this because i i hit it i double bagged it so he couldn't see through the bag either yeah he he comes up and he's got a bag and he tells me i can't see what it is and that's all i know about it so all right let me grab this here. So today, on the B2 show, um, I was actually walking around Walmart before this podcast and just came upon, uh, let's see, this is, imagine apple cinnamon yogurt crisps. This actually sounds kind of good. I don't know. I'm. So there was another flavor right next to it, mixed berry, and I almost grabbed that one, but I was like, mm, let's start with the apple cinnamon. So... It was kind of the weirdest thing I could find in Walmart in the time that I had. So I had got there like 15 minutes before you texted me, hey, I'm home. So, um, so yeah. Let's, we are uh, uh, really good at planning ahead. So let's uh, crack this bag and take a whiff, I guess. I mean, it sounds good. Well, I can't. I need two thumbs to open the bag. Yeah, we shouldn't have lost your other one. They actually don't smell... Too bad. I'll let you take a couple. I don't... They don't really smell good either. The, no, they're not like the worst smelling thing, and but they're not the best smelling thing either. Oh, gosh. oh Jesus Christ. Okay, apparently I'm like taking a, half the bag. Yeah, you're kidding fucking kindergarten. And now we're explicit. <laughs> we're doing so well. <laughs> Alrighty. So without further ado, here is the... Uh, the apple cinnamon yogurt crisp. I don't know how they turned yogurt. They, yogurt I mean, crisp. they kind of look like a cracker slash pretzel kind of thing. Yeah, I'll take. I'll I'll pull a Krista from Strange Sessions. Which thank you to Strange Sessions for giving us some the motivation to do a podcast here. Yeah, you know, back to the shout outs. Shout out to them because, you know, we had kind of discussed the whole podcast thing, and we did like one episode on Twitch. And we're like, yeah. that was kind of the extent that we had kind of put into it. Yep. But then we both started listening to that and we were kind of like, yeah, we need to, this is what we need to do. Yeah. And we stole a couple of ideas. We're sorry. Please don't sue us. We love but, you. But you guys are too good at what you do. So you probably right. never listen to this, but hey. yeah, here we go. Without further ado, the yogurt crisp. Hmm. <laughs> I don't really get any yogurt. I don't get yogurt, but I also don't get any flavor. <laughs> and I get like the bit of like the. I get the cinnamon. A with, little bit. Is cinnamon with like a hint of artificial apple. But there's also. I don't know if you're getting it, but when I put put it in my mouth, the first like. <laughs> I hate you. Um, the first like thing that I got was almost a little bit of salt yeah there's definitely before it was sweet hmm. mm -hmm. interesting yeah i'm gonna keep eating these <laughs> all right they're not horrible you do the podcast by yourself i got these all right out of out of 10 what would you rate that i 
I mean, four. That's weird because that's what I was going to say. I too. mean, I'll sit here and eat them, but I probably ain't going to go out and buy them. Right. <laughs> when you put them in front of me, I'll be like, yeah, I'll eat them. So but. I will put a photo up on the Facebook page and you can find it at walmart.com. I'm just kidding. Just Walmart. You can probably also get it on .com too. Probably. Um, but yeah, I would say four. I mean, I was hoping for more flavor. But I also, like you said, I didn't get the yogurt either. So mm-hmm. that's that's the weird thing about it. I don't know how they call it a yogurt crisp unless they just make the cracker better out of yogurt or put yogurt in it in replacement of milk. I don't know. But isn't there milk and yogurt? <sighs> yeah, you're right. All right. So as Dan finishes his crackers up here... Um, we will get into today's topic. So a little bit backstory. Um, so in the last podcast, we had talked about um, finding our niche. Um, and so we are going towards a true crime slash weird things um, that involve crime too, I guess is how to put it. Um, so today is going to be the first installment of the unsolved murder um, cases that we're going to be doing here on the B2 show. So maybe first and last, but hopefully not. Let's leave a weird aftertaste. Yeah, it's kind of like... Sorry, that was weird. I just got like a... I don't know. Hopefully we don't die. Um, so anyway, unsolved murder installment number one here on the B2 show. Um, give me just a second here. Yeah, it doesn't... doesn't uh doesn't taste terrible, but it leaves though. Weird aftertaste. More like an after like feeling. Yeah. Yeah. That's an allergic reaction. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> tasting the poison yet? Right. <laughs> Today's topic is going to be the unsolved murder of Georgette Bauerdorf. Um mm, Bauerdorf. Bauerdorf. Sounds like a great like so, uh Bauerdorf sounds like a wonderful uh, like D and D character. Yeah, and so my wife was like, "You're gonna want to make sure that you are pronouncing that name before you do the podcast." And I am, just to clarify. It's if not Bauerdorf. Bo- no, Bauerdorf. No, so Bauerdorf. Georgette Bauerdorf is going to be the murder that we look into today. So, a uh, little background information to start off. So, uh, Bauerdorf, uh, born in New York City, was the younger of two daughters, born. Two, New York City native oilman George Frederick Bauerdorf, so I'm guessing that's dad, and Constance Danhauser. So Bauerdorf attended the St. Agus Ag, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Agus School for Girls in New York City. After the death of her mother in 1935, so it tells you how far we're going back here, the family moved to Los Angeles where she attended the Marlboro School of West or and Westlake School for Girls. Like Marlboro, like as in cigarettes. I it's spelled a little different, but I mean, but that that's how it's pronounced. Yeah, though, is, okay. yeah. Um, so Bauerdorf uh, aspired to be an actor actress and moved to Hollywood in August of 1944. She took an apartment at the El Pal- Palacio apartments at 8493 Fountain Avenue in West Hollywood. Oh, so we have the address and everything? Yeah. And worked briefly as a reporter for a local newspaper. This didn't last long as soon after Bauerdorf became a volunteer as a junior hostess at the Hollywood Canteen. And we'll get into what the canteen was here in a little bit. So Georgette's duties included entertaining and dancing with soldiers. So, Like it, pole dancing or? No, it sounded like from when I was doing research, what it was was basically, um, you got to remember if you're thinking historically. Um, I am not. So 1944, what was going on? Uh, Nam. Mm, no, <laughs> that was in the 80s. Um, uh, a world war of some sort. Yes. So. Uh, number number two. Yes. There you go. You're yeah. getting there. So as soldiers were coming back, they they either didn't have a mistress or 
they were lonely when they got back. So the canteen was kind of, it wasn't a strip club by any means, but it was just, it was, you know, that they danced and danced right. with the soldiers and stuff. Right, so right, it was right. kind of a, a gathering place, if you will. Yeah, because, I mean, dancing was kind of a big thing back in the day. Right. So it's a little bit about Bauerdorf. So now we get into uh, the actual murder. So mm-hmm. here you go. It's uh, four and a half pages. So get your coffee. Let's sit in. Um, it'll probably take me two minutes to get through. Probably. No, no I'm just going to be a uh, seven minute podcast this right. week. Um, Stay s- tuned next week. Where it'll be nine <laughs> minutes. So the murder of American social light and oil heiress. Georgette Elise Bauerdorf is arguably one of Los Angeles' most baffling unsolved murders. And we'll get into why here, obviously. Uh, there oh, were, I would hope so. There were multiple pieces of evidence, including fingerprints. However, the murder was never solved. What? Yep. That's. I'm sure we'll get into that with what we think happened or why it wasn't solved. Because, yeah, we'll get into that here. So, the day before her death, Bauerdorf cashed a $175 check and purchased an airline ticket to El Paso, Texas for $90. She informed her friends that she was going to, um, or she was going there to rendezvous with her soldier boyfriend. So, on October 11th, 1944, Private Jerome M. Brown, an anti-aircraft artillery trainee from Chicago, was identified by Fort Bliss authorities as the man Bauerdorf was going to visit in El Paso. Uh, Brown told Army officials he met Bauerdorf at the Hollywood Canteen on the night of June 13th um, and then had left California a few days afterwards and arrived in El Paso some days after their meeting. They corresponded, and the trainee said he received six letters from the heiress after their visit at the canteen. So, um, and he comes in to be a potential suspect here. I mean, I would have, I would have, <clears throat> excuse me. Wow. You would assume so? I would assume so, being, yes. I mean, I'm assuming based on just the information that I've been given so far, he's probably one of the last people to see her. Right. Um, and so we'll get, we'll get into a little bit of, kind of one of the issues that I see with this here in just a second. So um, there were reports that Bauerdorf may have gone directly home from the Hollywood canteen on October 11th, 1944. The time she left the canteen was around 11.15 p.m. and expected time of death would be within the next three hours. Okay, that's not a whole lot of time. No, not a whole lot of time at all. So her neighbor reported that he heard her scream, stop, stop, you're killing me. He said he thought it was a family argument and thought not to report it. Or uh, was it just like one of those things where somebody's like telling really funny jokes? I I mean, that could be. I I don't know. You know, just, you know. stop, stop, you're killing me. Ah. Right, right. Or was it a full out scream? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you never know. Yeah. Um. And then, other than a small amount of cash and her car, nothing else was stolen. So, she had... Uh, Say cash and her car, or cash in her car? No, other than a small amount of cash and her car. Okay, so... So, we'll get into that here. Okay. Um, But, I found that odd, because she... So, she's a socialite, which is basically what a socialite is, is um, somebody that's seen as higher up in like fashion world and right. stuff. And um, she's an heiress to this guy that ran the oil companies. Right. Basically. So she's, she's got a lot of money. Right. And she's and pretty high I, social standing. I so know. And that's one of the things that I researched and I'm not sure if we'll get into it here, but she had a lot of jewelry. She was fond of jewelry right. and high like price jewelry. But and all that was, none of all that, that was, was taken. There. Yeah. None of it was taken. Okay. Just the cash in the car. All right, I'm I'm developing some theories already. All righty. So, um, early in the day um, that she was murdered, uh, she had lunch with a Mrs. Rose Gilbert, which was the secretary to her father. The two women went shopping 
Gilbert told deputies that Bauerdorf was in good spirits and that she showed no signs of being depressed. You don't believe so? Nope. Okay. All right, so let's get to the night of the killing. So on the night of the killing, Georgette picked up Sergeant Gordon R. Adland up about 11.30 p.m. on Sunset Boulevard, which was five or six blocks west of Vine Street, um, where he was hitchhiking. Adlin stated that all, all the while she seemed excited and talked about a plan or plans for a trip to Texas to visit a boyfriend. She said that she had to hurry home because she was expecting a telephone call from him, which I don't know if this is like 1940s Uber or what. I mean, right. Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, but Adlin said he hadn't paid much attention to the woman driver because the lighting wasn't very good in the car. So Georgette dropped him off on Sunset, a block east of Laurel Canyon Boulevard, which, I mean, if you want to do the, I was looking at a map and it's, everything's relatively within close pro- proximity. I mean, our day, it's like five, six miles. Okay. So it's within, you can definitely walk that amount of time within the three hours. Then. Right. Well, oh, see, you're building, the, you're building the case already, hey? So, um, Adlin said most curiously, um, that after Georgette dropped him off, she turned right on Laurel Canyon, um, which w- led into Hollywood Hills in the San Fernando Valley, um, which was the opposite direction that our apartment would have been in. Okay. So when the police were asking him, that's one thing that he brought up that was relatively odd. So why is she turning left when she should be turning right? So who was her turning right? Who was driving at the time? Georgette. Oh, so, so Ge- she was driving herself, and she went she, left she was, instead of right. Yeah. So she left the canteen, and it sounded like she was driving around, and this guy was hitchhiking. She picked him up, took him where he needed to be, and she should have turned. Let's see. She should have turned right. Um. But in, or no, she turned right onto Laurel Canyon instead of left, which would have right. led back so to her apartment. So she went the opposite way of where she needed right. to go. Alrighty. On October 12th, 1944, around 11.30 a.m., a maid known as Lulu and a janitor known as Fred Atwood came to the apartment to clean. Atwood stated that the door to the apartment was already half open, so they entered, which, I mean, that's what I would do. I mean, right, the door is open. Kick that bitch open. All right, exactly. <laughs> So they entered to complete their normal cleaning duties. The pair started cleaning uh, the downstairs downstairs rooms, and at some point, Lulu heard water dripping from upstairs. When Lulu went to investigate, she found Bauerdorf's body face down in the bathtub with bloody water in it. So that's where Bauerdorf was found, uh, inside her apartment in the bathtub. So... Uh, due to the location of Bauerdorf's apartment, uh, the L.A. County sheriffs were in charge of the investigation instead of seasoned LAPD detectives, which I think is partially to blame here. Uh, you know, you got a murder. Why are you right. letting inexperienced detectives go at it? But regardless, uh, the first of many weird happenings with this case is that there were numerous fingerprints found. So strong, clear fingerprints were found in the apartment on glass top tables, on the bathtub where the where the body was found, on doors and many other places. And I'm assuming like did they do any like research into these fingerprints? I mean so they didn't like already rule out like you know, like the maid Right. Like, obviously their fingerprints are gonna be all over the place because they're cleaning right. them. So I'm right. assuming like did they do you know if they even yeah, during research, I know they, they ran them, but it didn't come up with anybody. Like, that, for some odd reason, they weren't able to even get a name. I don't know if they... I mean, it goes into... Let me read this here, and we'll talk about okay. it. So, um, good prints were also found on the car, um, which is something a little weird that we'll get into. Uh, fingerprints were also found on the night light over the entrance to the apartment. So, wait, they found her car? So where was her car? We'll, we'll get into that. Okay. All right. All right. 
So uh, the nightlight outside of her apartment, which this is a little odd thing for me. So the nightlight outside of her apartment was eight feet from the floor. So you either got a really, really tall dude or they had to stand on something. But anyway, so they found good good prints on the nightlight. Um, so they assumed the nightlight had, be t- had, burnt, had been turned um, in its socket so the bulb would not operate by the switch. So basically whoever, it sounds like at some point it was planned. Right, right, definitely um, uh, premeditated. So they're turning the light off so they're not seeing. So, right. um, However, prints on the bulbs were smudged. So that could be uh, obviously somebody's definition of good prints and my definition of good prints right. are they two different things. They seem to be different thing. two different things, yeah. So, um, but I know I did read that... Um, the detectives with the the sheriff's department did do research, but again, when you got to think in forty four, they probably don't have the technology that we do. Right. Um, I, I can almost guarantee they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can jump back real quick in my time machine, in my time machine yacht, but um, <laughs> it'll be a minute. Um, another odd thing about the murder is that Bauerdorf's jewelry. And other valuables were not stolen. Although almost $100 was taken from her purse, there was a large roll of $2 bills and thousands of dollars worth of sterling silver lying in an open trunk that was never taken. So trunk meaning... Like they, a chest. Like, yeah, like a yeah. jewelry... Mm, like a jewelry box, basically. On water. yeah. Yeah. Um, really big jewelry box. Right. Um, Bauerdorf did appear to put up a great struggle. So an examination uh, uh, by the Los Angeles County autopsy surgeon, Frank R. Webb, found an abundance of bruises and scrapes and revealed she had been raped. So the knuckles on Bauerdorf's right hand were smashed and bruised. There was a large bruise on the right side of her head and another on her abdomen, perhaps the result of blows from fists is what he said. She had been strangled with a piece of bandage material stuffed down her throat. And Webb said that her right thigh showed the bruised imprint of a hand even to the fingernail markings piercing the skin. Damn. Yeah. The cause of death was established as strangulation with a piece of fabric um, that had been jammed about four inches down the victim's throat. So apparently her jaws were clenched and her mouth was closed so that the fabric was ini- was not initially visible, leading to speculation that she had drowned in the tub, although only a few drops of water were found in her lungs. Right, okay, so, so she was... M- my experience and the understanding, if she's only got a few drops... She was dead before dead. she was put in the tub. Yep. Yeah. All righty. And you asked about it, so I will answer your question. A 1936 Oldsmobile Coupe, so this is Bauerdorf's car, belonging and registered to, um, actually it's, it is Bauerdorf's car, but it's another Bauerdorf's car. So belonging and registered to her dad's car. Yeah, no. No. Uh, Belonging and registered to her sister, Connie Bauerdorf. Oh, yeah, okay. Was also missing. Or not not Connie, but the car. Right, right. right. Uh, when the car was located, there was a dent in one of the fenders. A mechanic said the damage was recent and may have been the result of collision with another car. The Oldsmobile was discovered abandoned on East 25th Street, just off of San Pedro Street, Los Angeles, where it apparently ran out of gas. And how far away is this from her apartment? Um, Not too far. It was... It was roughly, um, I think, 10 miles or something like that. Um, I think we get that into this here coming up. So um, one of the things that we have to remember when we're looking at this case, um, and obviously neither one of us, well, well, I mean, I was alive in 1944, but yeah, yeah, no, Um, neither one of us were were alive in 1944. So a little bit of a fact that I added in here just so you're aware and this is where I get into talking about the radius of this, of everything found. Mm-hmm. 
So gasoline was actually rationed in 1944. Mm. So just like bread was in the Great Depression. Right. Um, so there, there were actually under newly tightened regulations. So drivers with eight cars, so I think it's basically a price point. So you, I mean, depending on your social and economic status, you were issued a card. So drivers with A cards were granted 120 miles a month. That's it. Hmm. So that would get me to work. One day. Yeah. And halfway there. Yeah. Um, but so 120 miles a month or about two gallons a week. So a bit of research revealed that a 1936 Oldsmobile six cylinder sedan got 18 miles per gallon. So knowing that. Um, so Bauerdorf didn't, what I read during research was that Bauerdorf didn't really t- maintain her car. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, a new Oldsmobile may have got 18 miles. Her car may have gotten 15. Right. And so when I think about the, one of the issues that I think about is, so Bauerdorf obviously drove to the canteen which was two miles from her home. So Mm -hmm. that's four miles round trip right there. Um, And then she picked up this random sergeant dude and dropped him off. You know, probably another mile or two. Right. So you're talking, you know, so the car was not discovered too far away, but it was because probably that she ran out of gas and, um, God, I just think about 120 miles a month and, (laughs) Jeez. So that'd almost be a relief to me that I wouldn't have to go anywhere. Right. So let's say Georgette took the car on her shopping trip. So mm-hmm. I remember the day before, you know, that afternoon she went on a shopping trip with Miss Gilbert, Mrs. Gilbert. I drove it from her apartment to the Hollywood canteen and then drove back as far as Sunset and Laurel Canyon, which is where she dropped off this Sergeant Brown guy. Plus the killer driving 10 miles figuring that the car um, got about 15 miles to the gallon, that would only account for a bit more than a gallon of gas. So if it's, I mean, we're, you know, depending on when the the weeks land, she could still have a gallon, or what did she use that other gallon for? Right. Um, So recall that Sergeant Gordon R. Adlin... Um, said that he was hitchhiking at Sunset West of Vine Street and that Georgette picked him up about 11.30, gave him a ride as far as Sunset and Laurel Canyon. And then also recall that Adlin said that instead of heading for her apartment on Fountain, she turned right on Laurel Canyon, which would have taken her up to Hollywood Hills or over into the San Fernando Valley. So simply getting to the valley at Laurel Canyon um, would have taken 4.3 miles, according to Google Maps. So 8.6 miles round trip. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's half a gallon of gas. If Georgette had visited any late night, late night restaurant in the valley, that would have had more miles. So let's take uh, that three quarters of gas. This is, again, purely speculation here. Uh, the total driving might have consumed at least two gallons and possibly more about the weekly average. So the driving time on the day of her death was a gallon, but you know, the nights and days previous, she, it, by the sounds of it and looking at Google maps, she would have already burned through most of it. Right. So would a 20 year old woman drive over the hill to the valley around midnight in a car that was prone to be breaking down or why would she? You know what I mean? That's Mm -hmm. one of my thoughts, especially if she were low on gas and eager to get home because she wasn't expecting a phone call from her boyfriend. So obviously we'll never know the answer for that for sure. So back to the murder. Enough about the car. (laughs) Um, A reconstruction of the murder gave investigators the idea that the murderer perhaps entered Bauerdorf's apartment by passkey and lay in wait downstairs until she had gotten ready for bed. So another possibility is he rang the doorbell after she retired um, and uh, 
pen press, which is, I believe, one of the detectives believed it unlikely that Bauerdorf was accompanied home by a serviceman. So I don't know how they established that, but that was one of the thoughts. She might have met someone at the canteen who drove her home and left her at the door, but we know that she picked up this other guy, so I don't believe that that is an option. Right. At a coroner's request um, on October 20th, a jury of nine men found that Bauerdorf's death was a homicide and proposed a thorough investigation to apprehend her killer. During the hearing, Fred Atwood, the janitor, if you remember, Mm -hmm. of the apartment building, provided new evidence for deputies. He said he heard woman's heels clicking back and forth, and Siri apparently kicked up on that. Siri, Um, stop. Yeah. This is not your time. Um, It's your own podcast. (laughs) Um, So he heard women's heels clicking back and forth on the floor, followed by a loud crash, like a tray dropping on the floor is what he said. When uh, when did he hear this? Uh, on the night of the murder. So, okay, so this was the night that she died, and they came in again the next morning, and that's when they found her. Right. Okay. So he was awakened um, by this noise shortly before midnight on October 11th. So, like, I was confused when I was doing research because I forget about midnight being the new day. So she actually... they confirmed her death on the 12th but a lot of the stuff that you hear and speculation about hearing stuff and stuff happened on the 11th gotcha okay. but it was right there so it, right right they it said between the hours of 11 30 and probably 2 30 is when she died gotcha okay so he re- recognized the sounds as coming from Bauerdorf's apartment um he said there was no one with her which how we know like did he go up there and check? Like, right. Like, does he mean like there was no one with her that night or just no one when they found her? Right. Um, so two of the deputies confirmed the janitor's testimony that Bauerdorf was alone before her slayer evidently lured her into her darkened door. So I know one of the things that was um, during my research that I saw was that it was actually Connie, her sister, and her that were staying in the apartment. But due to marriage purposes and, like, career opportunities, Connie and her, it was either soon-to-be husband or husband, moved back with the father in New York City. And so um, Georgette was actually living alone at this time. Okay. So, but but I'll let you finish before I... But... No, I just wanted to put that out there that she was right. So she was alone. living alone at the time. So, but it also, um, and I think we'll get into this in theories. Um, one of the detectives had noticed um, her diary was like packed full of letters from servicemen. Like there was dozens of notes from servicemen. So, mm. obviously, working on the at the uh, canteen, I'm sure she would have gotten a lot of, you know, fan mail. Right. Um, but I just kind of find that odd and that, um, the same janitor noted that she did bring servicemen home. So I'm wondering if when he said that she was alone, that that night she didn't bring anybody home. So like more like she was alone and that was weird. Right. Yeah. I think that so was maybe that's why he noticed it. Right. Because she's not often alone. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's where you, you asked. I just wanted to right. think of it. So, Bauerdorf's body was shipped to New York via train after it was released by the coroner's office on October 15th. So, her funeral was held in New York City. She was buried in a Long Island cemetery um, that the Bauerdorf family had maintained for generations. So, that's a little bit about... um, Well, that's a lot about the the murder, but... That's, uh, yeah, it seems like most of the murder, actually. So, um, theories. Let's get into theories. Let's get into theories. Theories. This is my favorite part. One of the um, biggest things that, or one of the main theories, so, um, was that it was suicide? That she actually committed suicide? That she was depressed and wanted out, I guess? I mean, I can see the depression. I mean, if she's like, 
you know, meeting up with all these random dudes. Mm-hmm. I can see where like she would have some issues going on. Right. But I don't think that's like I don't think she's gonna forcefully shove a towel down her throat to commit yeah. suicide. Yeah. And I think that the evidence that's there isn't very um I guess it doesn't support a suicide. Right. It, it's more uh, more a homicide. Yeah, because, um, I mean, like, the whole thing, like, they said that she was raped. But, like, that could have happened before she got home. Right. So, like, in theory, like, those could be two... I mean, that would be a really terrible night. Right. But those could be two completely unrelated events, basically. Yeah. You know? Yep. No, I get what you're saying. Uh, the second theory is she died from natural causes, which how it, uh, yeah, I don't know why this popped up. She, uh, she naturally choked on a towel. Right. And so during the initial investigation, so, um, days after, uh, Georgette's father, George Bauerdorf said she may have died of natural causes. So we know that she suffered from cramps and heart pains, and we may think they may have caused the death, he said. Um, the brother of Bauerdorf's stepmother denied that the victim suffered um, any sort of heart problems or fainting spells, like the father said. Right. Which, I mean, okay, if if it was natural causes, again, you already brought up the kind of <laughs> the ringer is yeah, how is... Uh, stuffing a towel down her throat natural I causes. mean, did she like just eat towels on like a regular basis? And <laughs> I don't just know. Maybe it's like one of those weird this things. this one? Yeah. Where like, one of like my weird addictions. <laughs> where they eat their hair. Yeah. Um, or cornstarch. Yeah. <laughs> but um, even if she she suffered from fainting spells or heart issues or heart pains or whatever like the father said. None of that and let's say, explains. Yeah. Let's say towel aside. You can't put the towel aside. That's a big... Right. No, I know. (laughs) I'm just saying. If we were... Okay. There's still the bruises. Right. Which, obviously. And she was also raped, which, again, that's not natural causes. I mean, she didn't die from the rape. Right, right. I hope she didn't. But, um, And then the biggest thing for me is only finding a couple drops of water in her lungs. Right. So she was already dead when she got in that tub. Right. She was obviously placed into the tub right. to try to, my guess is to try to throw off the actual right. cause of death. Yeah. Cause it also, um, during my research too, there was a, a, a part, I don't know why this wasn't in here. Cause I thought I put it in there, but anyway, <laughs> there was a part of the, uh, the carpet that had mm-hmm. like a blood stain on it. Like so, obviously she was bleeding before she got into the bathtub, and this is this in the in the bathroom still, or is this in the, a different room? The rug, yeah. No, the rug was like in the hallway leading up to the bathroom. So she was bleeding, like making her way into right the bathroom, bathroom. whether by herself or not. Right. Okay. And then the killer tried to clean that up too. So, mm. or somebody. I mean, if I was bleeding, I wasn't going to turn around and scrub the carpet. Right. You know? I w- I'd probably wait till I'm done bleeding. Right. <laughs> M- um, maybe that's that's why she had a towel. Maybe. She's like, oh, there's blood in my throat, too. Better right. get that out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or she was holding on to it. Like, she put it in her mouth for safekeeping. And then just, I don't it know. It just tripped. Like, something scared her and was like. <gasps> yeah. And then inhaled it and died. Yeah, I doubt that. Yeah, so do I. That's a mm-hmm. very, that that's a very Final Destination-esque death. <laughs> and that would be, take a lot of coincidences. Yeah. Um, and the last of which, um, which I think is probably the way that I lean, um, is a mad serviceman. So Bauerdorf often picked up hitchhiking servicemen, which again, we heard about the one that she picked Mm -hmm. up the night before and gave them a ride. She also took servicemen to nightclubs and picked up the tab quite frequently. So why? I don't know, but. More power to you. Right. Uh, Georgette. Can. Yeah. Georgette let servicemen spend the night in the living room of the apartment if they had nowhere to stay and apparently had several extra keys that she loaned to them. 
Investigators found bundles of letters in the apartment from men in all branches of the service thanking her for her hospitality. So I think um, this is probably my favorite theory. I mean, it just makes sense. I mean, you you let servicemen into your apartment. One of them bound to be batshit after coming home from the war. Like, no, uh, not trying to be mean. Right. I but mean, it's just it's a the I can't remember what the term is, but it's basically an odds thing. You let enough people. Right. You're you gonna know. find the one that. Yeah. Yeah. I know there's a term for it, but I can't think of what it is. Right. And so the sub theory with this one, this is the only one that really has a sub theory, is that. Um, the one that um, the serviceman that she said she picked up that which was hitchhiking. Mm-hmm. So he brought up a point in his testimony about why she would go the other which way. But um, some people speculate that did she pick him up at all? So or if she picked him up, did she pick him up from the canteen and brought him home? And this is all just a ruse story to kind of, you know, alibi himself out. Right, right. Which I think makes sense thinking about, you know, the gas issue. That's kind of why I went into detail about it. So Mm -hmm. for her to drive out of the way and then go out of the way even further, like she's going to either break down herself or not have enough to get to work. Like, right. Or volunteer, whatever you want to call it. (laughs) Um, And... There's not really a third person involved, so it's kind of a he said, she said kind of thing, and she's right. dead. <laughs> you right. know what I mean? So so she ain't said anything. Right, exactly. That was great English. Yeah. <laughs> she ain't said anything. <laughs> Welcome to Mount Tuggy. Uh, um, so um, I guess I'll turn it over to you at this point. Um, what do you think? So. At, or do you have questions to ask before we get to that point? Um, I don't know. I think that the you know the, the the service man you know he i think he yeah one of them probably had something to do with it mm-hmm. but i think it's entirely possible that i mean first of all like it's a little bit suspicious to me that her father was saying that she had all of these medical conditions right that other people were flat out saying no, not you're true. wrong. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you would think like even like an estranged father, like right. he, w- if that was the case, like if they weren't close, he wouldn't know that. Yeah. So why would he say that? You know what I mean? Yeah. What do you, I don't know. Anyway. Um, <laughs> so like, I, I think that somebody, not necessarily her father has something to do with it, but like, so I guess, Let's break this down real quick. Okay. Do you think it was suicide or do you think she was murdered? Uh, definitely murdered. Okay. I'm on the same page there. Okay. I, I don't see how you commit suicide via towel. I mean. Like swallowing, basically. I mean, maybe it's like erotic asphyxiation, like some weird thing. But right, she that's took still, it too far. Yeah. That's that's really weird. Um, but um, so do you think it's. Do you think it's some random serviceman or do you think it's um, somebody that she knew? So whether it be the boyfriend in El Paso or this I, guy. I was just about to say, does anybody know, did they get any sort of alibi for him? No. And that's, I mean, short of, short of the murder not being solved, I want to say these officers were pieces of shit and they should fucking retire after this okay because like that was one of my first things and nobody thought like during my research nobody thought to check like um this apparent boyfriend's like plane check plane tickets going back out like right or if he did you know let's say he drove up like was there anything to tie him down to say no he was actually in town until this day right like to what the point if where you know, like you say, you know, he showed up like to surprise or whatever. Cause you know, since she gave keys to everybody, like why wouldn't he have a key? Right. And then, you know, he goes there and maybe he finds the journal that she has. Right. You know, with all this he other stuff. Pissed off. Right. Like, yeah. I mean, cause we obviously we don't know what's in there. Right. You know, it could have been like some crazy, like intimate 
stuff that like pissed him off. You know right. what I mean? Like, no, yeah, I get what you're saying. And I guess my my only other theory, I guess just thinking about it way out of this world, is um, a potential. I don't want to say serial killer. I mean, I'd have to see if there was more killings like this. But the thing that I'm kind of stuck on is the whole... She was either borderline dead or dead completely before she was put in the bathtub. And that, to me... Ooh. Something just kicked in my head. So, it's almost a fatherly love. um, Fatherly love sort of thing where... See, okay, I see where you're going here. Like, it's, you want your daughter to be comfortable, mm-hmm. and so she's in pain, so you put her in the tub? I, I don't know. I mean, maybe that's a, a I see, ballpark. See, I see what you're going for, and it's kind of similar to what I was thinking, but not quite. Like, okay. like I said, I don't really think the father had anything to do with that. I just thought it was weird that, or maybe he knew something, but right. my, do we, did you happen to find any information <laughs> Sorry, that was really horrible. <laughs> Doody, do da. Um, Did you happen to find any information about after all this was said and done? Because mm-hmm. you said her parents were like really rich, right? Yeah, he owned he owned a oil company. What happened to all of their money? Did that get passed solely to her sister now? You know, I don't know, and I didn't see that in the research that I did. But that's that's a good question. That, that. Because her sister would have a key. Because okay. she, you said she, she technically lived there. I mean, it was right. their place together, yeah. but she was staying somewhere else. Right. Um. You know, her, her sister would have a key. Would have the means to get there. Right. Um. Could even have incited. Is that is that the word I'm looking for? I don't know. Basically, like, you know, she had all these letters, right? Right. Like. Who's to say she wasn't responding to these letters? Okay. As her sister? Okay. You know, essentially like playing this long con gotcha. to get this dude like he's, you know, no, maybe I maybe I've just seen too many movies. Right. But like, you know, like there's guys writing letters and this dude's in love and shows up to surprise her and yeah. she has no idea right. who he is. Right. And he thinks she's just like I don't know what, but like, so I guess with that and with us discussing it, what do you think or what do you like as the most fitting way that she probably sister and her husband? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never even thought about the whole money side of things. That's actually a good point. Uh, obviously, you know, I, I think that, her sister definitely had like probably had a part in it Mm -hmm. just based on, I mean, obviously I don't know about the inheritance, but like just based on like she would have motive. Right. You know, if all that, if if they're that rich, all that money goes to her. Like I, we shouldn't, they didn't have any other siblings, right? No, no, I don't believe so. She might've had one other, but I think it was brother. So I don't know about that one then. So, um, but let's say those is just the two because we don't know for sure. But right. Um, I'm researching. Just researching on the on the episode live, live from Saturday. It's uh, it's a, not night live. It's 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 Wednesday afternoon, right? Um, but yeah, her sister. I think it was her sister and her sister's husband. Okay, I'm stuck on, um, just, um, either. Somebody, so either, because you got to remember too, this was a time before they had classifications of killers like they do now. Right. So people don't look at sociopaths or, you know, psychopaths the same way they do now that they did back in the 40s. Um, So I think it's either somebody, whether it be servicemen or not servicemen, Mm -hmm. um, that just had, kind of like you were saying, uh, an infatuation with, this woman, mm-hmm. um, which I mean, she wasn't like, let me pull up a picture. Like she wasn't the best looking, but she wasn't bad looking either. Right. I mean, so, it, like, you know, especially if you're like 
you know, she's meeting these people like in times where they're like really lonely, really what they, what she looks like isn't going to matter at that point. Like right. that's, but like it definitely had to have been somebody that she knew. Yep. Um, cause like I said, they said there was no forced entry. Like they basically yep. let themselves in. Yep. Um, my vote goes down to sister and her husband. I think what happened is her sister comes in. Mm-hmm. Uh, they probably staged the whole, you know, unscrew the light and to make it look like, yeah. Cause I see your point because with the letters and the sister's going to know about them, right? That, uh, she's going to be able to use that as an alibi of why she wasn't a, you know what I mean? Right. Like, person of interest i guess if you may mm-hmm. okay so again maybe i've just seen too many movies and that's why i'm creating yeah. this whole need to watch stop watching law and order man yeah this whole crazy scenario in my head right so her sister husband go in she basically like it's her sister so she can't do it okay that's why she has her husband okay husband goes too far you know does the yeah. you know the the the, the raping of the sister, hmm. you know, goes too far. I don't, know if I, I don't know if you could do that, though. I mean, but anyway, continue. I mean, you know, and then and that's why her sister put her in the tub to kind of, like, clean her up still. You know, like, she obviously went there to kill her sister, but it's still her sister. Right. So, so there's still, still, like, yeah, something. there's still that kind of, like, yeah. I'm kind of on board with you. Not sure if you've convinced me yet. I mean, it's a I don't very, know if I've convinced myself. It's a very solid explanation. I think that, um, again, it's either a a random person that's either a sociopath, psychopath that has this infatuation with Georgette, or um, a serviceman that came home. And was God damn it, Siri. Siri. Um, get your own show. <laughs> um, this is the B two Siri show. Um Siri cast. <laughs> um or a serviceman came home and it was supposed to be a um not like obviously not like a date that ends in a happy ending date but maybe it was a date that she let in and then one thing led to another and he thought it was going to be a happy ending date, right and, and so he forced himself on her and then mid mid uh happy time he had some sort of flashback you know what i mean like to the war uncontrollably mm-hmm. that he just right like some sort of like PTSD trigger right, right. then beat the piss out of her and then like right um the, the only other thought I had was the whole bathtub thing mm-hmm. which I don't understand in a PTSD standpoint like I don't know if he would be conscious enough to turn on the bath water but my only thought was um after it was all said and done and that he came out of it either either he was still in the PTSD phase Mm -hmm. and it was almost a symbolic like burying like somebody at war you know what I mean like the bathtub becomes a grave at that point Mm -hmm. or he just knew he fucked up and that he again wanted to make her comfortable and he placed her in the bathtub Regardless, I definitely think that somebody definitely murdered yep. Miss Bauerdorf. It was definitely somebody she um, knew at least well enough to let them in. Right. Or and I think they had that their own key. The LA County Sheriff needs to up their game on def- detectives. <laughs> yeah, we should just do like a whole this whole podcast series should just be like looking at their cases and solving it for them. Right. <laughs> with just the laptop and no real right. skills. What do you mean you had fingerprints and a murder was unsolved? That's the thing that baffles me. Like Yeah, like I got solid evidence. And again, they didn't have the technology that we do today, but there was still a way. Right, like I, I mean, I, I don't, yeah, I don't really know how any of that worked back then. I mean, there wouldn't have been a necessarily as broad scheme as a database that we have t- 
today. Right. I where, think, you know, they like, have like, weren't they a lot more like localized databases? Yeah, back but then? you're still talking about Los Angeles. You know right. what I mean? Still, We're not talking about place. Gowan. Right. Greenville even. You right. know what I mean? Like seven people. Yeah. Like we're talking about a large metropolitan area. Right, right. That should have had their shit together. Yeah. So Alrighty. Well that's uh today's topic taken care of. Um do you have anything? Uh I don't really have anything uh else to add. Okay. Besides my theory's right as always. Okay. Um so I guess with that being said, before we uh, sign off for the fortnight, the f- if it goes well, if we go things go according to plan, right? That, that's a two week time span. Yeah, case, I got you. you I, aware. I, I, I got. You looked that. a little confused. No, for a second. I I got it. Um, uh, I want to do something that I stole from another podcast, mm. or just um, a podcast stealing crew here and creating well own. you know i mean you, you listen I, it was, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's try that in english this time <laughs> dan just had a stroke <laughs> um you know you, when you listen to as many podcasts as we do like that's kind of all we listen to anymore right. yeah that's you, you know especially to. when you when you want to do a podcast you listen to all these different ones you you know you kind of pick up ideas from other ones mm-hmm. so the one that i really like is I'm a big fan of Rhett and Link's Ear Biscuits. Oh, okay. Um, and at the end Never of every... Never to it. You should. I'm just kidding. I have. Um, at the end of every episode, they basically, you know, Rhett and Link each give you, you, the listeners, all half you? of you. Yeah. Um, Actually, that one That one person in Pennsylvania. Whoever you are in Pennsylvania, Thank we you. appreciate you. We appreciate you so much. Yeah. Um, basically, want to give you like a, just a recommendation of something that we're into right now um okay basically you know movies books tv shows whatever okay um so you you have anything i've got two that i can think of right okay i'm up in the game here okay um so first of which i just started reading it so i don't know how good of a recommendation is but from what i've read it seems good so um i've never been a little bit backstory about me um, I've never been much. So your recommendation is to learn more about you. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> I uh, I've never been much of a reader. I don't know how to read. But but after our last podcast talking about uh, how technology is taking over the world, like mm-hmm. I'm trying to set my phone down at nights and go some. Well, that's hypothetical. Or you're trying the, to the, theoretically, just, theoretically. 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 Mm-hmm. Um. <laughs> Uh, when we put the uh, the information for the podcast, we are not sure what language to put it under. <laughs> right. Uh, clearly, Portuguese. it's not English. Um, but anyway, I've been trying to read more, mm-hmm. and by more, I mean at all. Read, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I'm with you. Other I than don't, the, I don't read either, so I'm with you on that one. Other than the random like news story that I read from time to time, like, <laughs> so I. I'm really, and I know you're not into it, but I'm really into the the whole Star Wars universe um, kind thing. of thing. Yeah. Right. Um, that's my go-to thing. Right. Um, and so I found this book. It's called Kenobi. And it's about old Ben. And those of you that are not Star Wars fans, that's Obi-Wan. Um Gotcha. Oh, Obi Wan Kenobi, and it's his um, story from, or basically his story when he's raising Luke. So when he's on Tatooine, what he did in the years before we see him again in Episode Four. Hmm. So it's really interesting, just from a um, a childhood standpoint, uh, to have that universal like star wars universal lore kind right, of thing like to have that fill in right because i was really excited until they canceled it about the movie to fill that in but right now i have to read to fill myself in so thanks fucking disney right um and then the second of which which if i was more prepared i was pulling it up and then you got me sidetracked um not really a book or a movie but um i got a brand new 
uh, yacht. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so for those of you that are in the streaming community, um, I just got a couple weeks ago and we've used it once, which we'll be editing that video probably now between now and 2025. Um, I got the Logitech C920 HD Pro camera, um, which was an upgrade from the $20 Logitech that I had. The same exact one that I'm currently, that's yeah. currently sitting on my monitor looking yes. at us, even yes. though it's not on. <laughs> right. But. Well, hi, FBI agent. Um, oh, FBI, how are you? <laughs> I don't know why that's how I talk to the FBI. <laughs> they make <laughs> me nervous I talk funny. Um, oh, FBI. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this webcam is a, a definitely a step up. From, right. from years that you have, um, the quality seems better. The only thing that I would say is I wish, kind of like you said, is it had a wider a view. wider, yeah, field of view. But other than that, it's a great camera. Um, good. It's great. It's great. It's, it's great. the best. It's the best. I can't do an impression at all. Donald Trump? Yeah. No impressions at all? Huh? No. Huh. I, I can barely even do myself. Mm, okay. As well, you've noticed, I screw that up I'm a lot. I'm going to turn off my impression switch on the back. Uh, so those are my two recommendations, the Logitech C920 uh, webcam and Kenobi, a Star Wars story by Star Wars. By a Star story, Wars. Kenobi. <laughs> <laughs> what do you uh, got? Uh, let's see. I got, uh, I guess I, I'll go to as well. You want to play that game? Uh, my, uh, I, he's over there just giggling at me and I don't know why. I just <laughs> waited and see what you come up with. So my uh you know first recommendation is is another podcast that I've been super into. Um I've been listening to basically just binging every day. I drive about a 35 40 minute drive to work every day. Well, it's it's 40 45 for me. So yeah, yeah. probably just shy of that yeah. for you. Yeah. Uh and so I listen to podcasts on the way to work and on the way home. I've been really big into Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard. Hmm. Uh, he basically has a bunch of celebrities, you know, and they talk about stuff. But it's not like your typical, like, you know, you watch like a talk show, you know, like Jimmy Kimmel, which speaking of that, he's on the episode I'm listening to right now. Huh. Um, but it's not like the, like that kind of thing where they're just like, hey, what you working on? You want to promote your movie kind of thing? Like they mm -hmm. actually talk about like their backstories, like how they started doing what they're doing, like... Gotcha. And like they get into some kind of like emotional, like real right. conversations too. Yeah. That I uh, quite enjoy. Um, so that's my first recommendation. And that and was Armchair What? Armchair Expert with Dax Shepard. All right. And my second recommendation is I can't remember the name of it, but it's these wonderful crackers we got here. <laughs> Are you serious? No, I don't I have a second say. recommendation. Oh, okay. I was going to say. <laughs> I, I just didn't like, want to be outdone, and then do yeah. you have a pile of them sitting there? That's all I, I could think about. Yeah, I don't know if I would necessarily recommend them. but I mean, were, I wouldn't recommend... If they were at a party, I would eat them. Right. I wouldn't recommend... And then I would go vomit. Them out. I wouldn't... But no, 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 I wouldn't. That's not that bad. That, yes, that's too far. Yeah. You've crossed the line that you cannot come back from. <laughs> I'm not ashamed. You should be. Mm, okay. Just in life. So, um, with that, I guess we will, what, it, what episode is this? This, uh, <laughs> three, I think this is three, uh, episode three, even uh, though our first episode starts at episode two, two when you listen to it. Right. So, um, that was due to some technical issues in the first episode yes. poofing into thin air. Yes. Um, so, um, with that, I guess we will kind of close episode three of the B2 show. Um, the unsolved murder of Georgette Bauerdorf um, with just a few things. So if you have a theory that we didn't mention or have ideas or further research on anything, um, we will be creating a group for all the um, listeners to join that they can kind of talk about amongst in that group. Um, or just... You know, post anything that's right interesting and true crime articles, whatever. Right. What, please no poops or what you ate for lunch because we both hate those. Yeah, um, we we're, we only send those through personal text messages. Right. We don't need to or see Snapchat. those. Right? Yeah, because um, that way they're gone and like 
But if you have seconds. anything like that, um, be on the lookout for that page or message the group at facebook.com forward slash the B2 show. And um, kind of to further off on that, if you guys have any questions about us or our backstory or anything about the show, uh, feel free to message us. Or with just, that. yeah, anything at all yep. about us. And, yep. well, you know, we're pretty open, open books. Yeah. So. I mean, we don't read, so. Right. We're, we're open. We are the books. We're, we're open uh, laptops. Um, yeah. <laughs> so. Um, but with that, that's that's all I got. Do you got anything? Uh, nope. I think that about sums it up. I think, uh, yeah, I'm starting to completely space out. Mm. I am running on about an hour of sleep, and I just got off a nine-hour shift. Yeah. And it's 140 degrees. It is. There's it's sweat <laughs> dripping down, like, both of our faces right yeah. now. <laughs> no. So we can't have a fan on or the window open because it brings too much noise. We want crystal clear quality. Right. Brought to you by Culligan Water. I'm just kidding. It's I'm not, not a sponsor. That, that, Please that. don't sue us. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't sue us, but if you want to be a sponsor, reach out. Let, let us know. Yeah. So, um, all righty. Well, without any further ado, then we will say our goodbyes. So, yeah, with that being said, look, uh, look, uh, wow, <laughs> I am. He is mentally shutting down. My, I'm just. Glad oh. I had to do the research this week. Yeah. Uh, yeah, basically, that's the end of the episode. Dan, um, Dan's got next topic, so the next one, he will be the the voice that you hear the most of. So Yeah, it's not going to be a good show. All righty. Um, but yeah, so thank you for anyone and everyone who is listening to this episode. Yep. You hear me right now. You hear my voice in your ears, maybe. Maybe you're wearing headphones. Maybe you're playing through speakers on a computer. Why did this be... Just or, become uh, a ASMR. Or thing. maybe, you know, you're driving down the road and I'm playing through your car, you know. But that's okay. But yeah, however however you're listening to me, thank you. Thank you. I, I greatly appreciate it. We'd like to welcome. No. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Uh, yeah, so we will try to keep the schedule uh, regular. Uh, uh, going. And uh, we're going to try to get back into the Twitch and... Uh, other things you said that like Stewie <laughs> Griffin that was impressive <laughs> and uh yeah um yep we're gonna try to get ready back on Twitch I don't even know how you said it that I part. don't either but, uh, uh but yeah so again thank you for anyone who listened and again like like he said um you know even if you have things you want to send to us like as far as even improvements that we can make yeah critiques uh like we're always trying to, you know, step up our quality and our uh, quality of audio and just content in general. So, so any uh, constructive criticism? No, just it sucks. We already know that. That's not helpful. Right. We're um, doing this because we want to, not because. Well, no, we want listeners, but. Yeah, I mean, we want listeners that want to listen. Right. So, um, I think with that being said, that is uh, all that I got. Alrighty. Well, until next time, this has been a B2 Show Studio production. Goodbye. Bye.